Hey there, Dave Politis, k Missing Project, copyrighted edition for our video page. And you're looking at the far east end of Lake McDonald in Glacier National Park. Got a big storm due in here tomorrow, but the beauty of this place in all seasons is just unreal. Right now the lake is uh, just about dead flat, but the, the peaks come in and out with the clouds. It's just phenomenally gorgeous. I like this view right here, the best myself. And what you're looking at too is a location called Going to the Sun Road, which is very famous. And uh, in the summertime, it's a windy road, very narrow, some thousand foot drops on each side that take you up to some beautiful locations up in the other end of the park. But uh, let me zoom you back out and uh, we'll get going with the uh, program here. Well, howdy doody. It's, uh, it's very cold here today to say the least. So uh, I'm gonna try to get through this. There's a few families here, but essentially I saw about five or six cars in the park, that's it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, first story I'm gonna talk to you about is the location up in uh, far northwest, northeast California, up near Modoc County. Here's the uh, letter I got. It says, hi Dave. I heard you speak about Modoc County in the past, so I know you are familiar with the area. I grew up in Surprise Valley, looking out my front window to the west were the forested Warner Mountains, and looking out to the east was Nevada and the bare alkaline Hayes Mountains. Just a gorgeous place to live. UFO sightings were very common, and it was not unusual to see stories about mysterious lights in the sky and vibrating noises coming from Warners in our local paper. That's kind of weird. Bigfoot sightings were also very common, reported from the north end of the valley around the Native American Reservation at Fort Bidwell. I myself have seen UFOs and more frighteningly mutilated cattle. The scary part is that the mutilated cow was in a field about 300 yards from our home, but that's not the story I want to talk to you about. When I was about 14, I was in a group of friends at Stowe Reservoir. Let me stop there for you a second. I'll show you where this is. So. This is a map of California. This is Oregon. This is Nevada. This is Modoc County up here. Stowe Reservoir is only about maybe 100 feet across. It's very small. Very small. Here's the city of Alturas and Canby. This is all in California. MacArthur, Harper. This area up in here does not get a lot of people from California traveling through. It's, it's pretty darn desolate. So, the scary part, uh, let me see here, oh yeah, a popular camping and fishing spot up in the Warners in Modoc National Forest. This was the reservoir. Most of the group were older than me, just me and my friend were both were tagging along with our older brothers. Everyone was drinking and socializing around the campfire, and my friend and I strayed from the main group. We walked around the reservoir, which is pretty small, maybe 70 yards across at its widest. We talked and walked for about 20 minutes before making it back to the group. The group, especially our older brothers, were furious. According to them, they had been shouting and searching for us for about 20 minutes. My friend and I thought they were kidding at first, but it became clear they were not. But while alcohol was a factor, the more I thought about it, the more it didn't make sense. My friend and I hadn't ever been gone long enough for the group to have drank themselves into insanity nor had we bought enough alcohol to even get to that point. I really didn't think too much of this experience when it happened back in 2004. But as I got older, the more it weighed on me. I started researching into Stowe Reservoir and found a comment on an article where the guy claimed to have seen a small craft flying into the reservoir. As I learned more about the 411 topic, portals, UFOs, and Bigfoot, I realized that all of the strange experiences I've had in Modoc 
are related and a part of something that we have yet to understand. There's a lot of unusual activity in this area, but the locals who do witness it usually don't want to talk about it and explain it away. They are usually old school ranchers who don't want to hear about UFOs, mutilated cattle, or Bigfoot. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the whole swamp gas explanation for lights in the sky. To most of them, it's all BS stories made up by the natives who drink too much. It's sad. Anyways, those are some of my stories. Feel free to respond with any questions and comments. Keep fighting the good fight, Dave. The village appreciates you more than the words can express. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Thanks for that story. Uh, yeah, the swamp gas stories. Talking about mutilated cattle for a second. I have a friend, very, very close friend, that owns a uh, dairy cattle ranch. And they've had mutilated cattle. And they don't want to talk about it. And their friends that own ranches around them don't want to talk about it. Because ranches get notoriety for this kind of thing quick. And people think that there's something wrong with their cattle. So they don't want to talk about it at all. And what they do is they just pick it up and they dump it in a pit and they forget about it. And they don't want to remember it. So I kind of understand the the theory. you got to understand something from me. When I go out on one of those type of cases, cattle, goats, I've seen all kinds of things. I don't talk about it, about the exact location ever. And it's not important to the overall story. I'll say if it's in Northern California or Southern Oregon or wherever, but I won't ever identify the ranch. But I do learn something new every time I go out on one of those cases. Really. So the next story. Dave, I'm a faithful member of the village and a proud one at that. Having become acquainted with your work five to six years ago through Coast to Coast and reading your first five books and watching just about all you posted on videos, I've come to the following conclusion. Uh-oh. <laughs> I conclude that whatever is responsible for the uber strange cases you study is that it is something that most people would rather not know about. Even the most efficient serial killer would be easier to deal with than the truth. This is going to change everything, and I don't know if we, meaning society in general, will be able to cope. So this leaves you, Dave. What to do with this politest guy as he is getting way too close and is going to blow the lid off? They have already engaged in trying to discredit you and making you look foolish. As a villager, I know that their smear campaign is not very effective. Initially, maybe some folks are buying it, but after listening to you and the respect you are afforded by your peers, they're going to have to back up and ramp things up. So I just wanted to remind you to watch your back. The dark forces at work in our country have silenced people for much less. I feel you're on the cusp of something big that they would rather keep buried from the masses. I wish you the best and offer my deepest sympathies for your tragic loss. It's difficult to understand how a guy that had everything lined up for success, could just go and do the most final of all. But that just shows us the pain that he must have been dealt with. We can't understand his pain, but it had to be overwhelming to the point that he could not go on. We'll never fully understand what it feels like, but it has to be real hell on earth. Yeah. Anyhow, just to say I am a proud to be a villager, and I feel reinvigorated after that episode on the YouTube page. Silo, out in the wind, political or not, but to hear a lucid voice in the sea of noise does my soul well. Thanks for what you do. Cambridge, Ohio. Thank you, sir. Now talk about that smear campaign for a second. It has been effective. Let me tell you a story. Uh, I travel a lot around to a lot of different shows, conventions, things like that. I meet a lot of people. And somebody who ran a big company ran into me. And we had a long conversation. And he goes, yeah, you know, you, I've heard about you, but I don't know a lot about you. But uh, I may want you to do some work for me in our company as a representative, I think. But I've got to do some work, and I'll get back to you. If you could just send me an email with the links to your documentaries and your books and things, I'd appreciate it. Sure. So I went back home, wrote up long email with all the books and 
conferences I've done recently, the documentaries, things I've done for TV. The guy never got back to me. Never. That's pretty... It would have been a, a good, good visibility for me, the cause we have, and it would have helped enormously financially. And in talking to others, I can only think that the guy Googled my name, saw the Wikipedia page, and said, don't want anything to do with this guy. Yeah. I can't think of another thing, because if you watched the movies, they were they stand on their own. If you would have read a book, it would have been fine, but I just got a feeling that Wikipedia page did do me in on that. It was, that one hurt. So, at some level, I think it is helping their cause. Next email. Hey Dave, you look good, sound good, and these naysayers got you all fired up. We used to call them shills. Smile on your face and you know the rest. Don't know if they even have a soul. Anyway, this is all, this has me thinking that this missing phenomenon is so similar to the Bermuda Triangle incidents. Navigation goes haywire, time-space distorted, and then vanished. I wonder... Take another look here. I wonder if, like the missing, the triangle ones might be found in areas already searched once the search is called off. Deep sixed, I suppose. Don't know. So the connection for me is Atlantis, because that is what the area is known for. My opinion or understanding. So what was Atlantis known for? High tech, evil off the charts, and it's rooted in witchcraft. Connect with Skinwalker Ranch, and it's rooted in deep evil and witchcraft. The name Yosemite means one who kills, which was related to the tribe that lived there and believed driven out and wiped out by the army, I think. But the connection with extremely violent people is witchcraft, rooted in sorcery, which deceives and led to their ultimate destruction as no one had any mercy for them, as they had none for anyone else. Atlantis was the society at the end of the Diluvian period that God said was so bad, the intent of every man's heart was evil, twisted, no love, empathy, kindness, etc. So my thinking is the earth is older than we know, with ages we know nothing of. But we have to live with the leftovers or residue of those past times near and far. Like you, I don't know, but when you look at the similarities, it leads to a common answer. Is it related to energy? I think so. Time-space anomalies, looks like it. Physics and quantum physics. Yes, because that's all there is in reality. And like you said, even at an atom looks like pure energy and the wicked operate in the metaphysical realm, which manipulates and or energizes those dimensions, right? And on the other side of light, in this age of good and evil is darkness. People disappearing is not natural. Otherwise, people would vanish all over and, and just do so. Instead, there's a pattern. Water, and gra water, granite, storms, point of separation, etc. So it looks like something had to be watching from where and how. I don't buy the UFO from another planet, but I do buy it from below and mass to look like something else to deceive. And that's biblical, too. So we have to look at Bigfoot. Yeti, trolls, dwarfs, demons, shadow people, ghosts, and on and ponder... Where did they come from? They mostly exist in parallel dimensions, don't they? But can they interact with us? There are people who can do so with them, but they have to sell your soul to do it. So very few do. So can I answer the question, no one but I? Hope it might point to reality because that's where we need to dwell. I went too long, but wanted to help if I could. Thanks for your empathy, consideration, kindness, caring, intelligence, commitment. I think it helps. Thank you. So, I'm going to take a little uh, turn here. And just in the last few weeks, there's been a lot of talk about mental health on many different forms. The UK has kind of led the pack uh, as one of the first countries to start talking about the pandemic and mental health. And like I said 
a year ago. Once the numbers come out, and they will be staggering, that mental health issues are going to be one of the big things to come out of this that we are being told right now. And when you think about our youngsters, our young people, they're the ones that are going to be our future leaders. They are the ones that we have to count on for direction. And yet they are the ones that are suffering the most from this right now. And that's the part that just kills my soul. Because our leaders are unwilling to even acknowledge this. There was an op-ed in the LA Times, and the title of it was, The Kids Who Aren't All Right, The Pandemic's Lasting Toll on Youth's Mental Health. And I'll summarize the uh, op-ed in a second, but I'm going to read you just a short blurb. It says, on a busy night shift in the psychiatric emergency room, during a month-long psychiatry rotation for medical school, I met my first patient, patient, a teenager. She was hunched over a stretcher at the far end of the hallway. She spent lots of times with her friends and loved going to school. Then COVID-19 lockdowns turned school virtual, and she was staring at herself for hours on end on Zoom. She told me that she became displeased with her appearance on the screen, comparing herself to her peers at every possible instance. As her self-loathing thoughts intensified, she became more isolated and began restricting her food intake. She lost more than 50 pounds, and her feelings of inadequacy worsened. She began cutting herself. After her parents found her pacing up and down the roof of her building, they brought her to the ER. Number one. Parents, we have a responsibility to our kids to be engaged, to talk to them, to know what they're doing, to constantly monitor, monitor their well-being at multiple fronts. If you're not doing that as a parent, you're not doing your job. If you aren't doing that as a parent, and if you aren't love being around your kids, and if you don't really love taking care of them, something's wrong. You've got to have that nurturing feeling in you to really engage with the kids. <laughs> the isolation that was talked about in this article is what is exactly wrong with people who have mental health issues. They feel like they have to isolate, but it's the worst thing you could do. Now, let's talk about the pandemic. Now you're not, the kids aren't around their friends anymore. And when they're out in public, they gotta wear a mask most of the time. Unless you're in Montana, nobody wears a mask. So, that's, that's troublesome. One more paragraph. During my psych rotation, I saw patients of all ages, but I was alarmed by how many of them were tweens and teenagers. I saw firsthand the harsh mental toll the pandemic has taken on young people. A recent study from the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention found that mental health-related visits to emergency rooms between April and October 2020 increased by 31% among youths ages 12 to 17 and by 24% among ages 5 to 11, compared to 2019. Now, what are the things that contributed to this? Deaths of friends and family. Deprived of routines. Oh. We are creatures of routine. And to have routines for kids are good. You get up at a certain time every day, you have breakfast, you go to school, you see your buddies, you see your friends, you see your girlfriends, you commiserate, you talk about things, you talk about the other sex, that's what we did in high school. Uh, you go to dances, you go to sporting events. You gotta have this, it's part of life. And we have to get our kids back in school, quickly. And if your district doesn't get you back in school, then you as a parent need to go to the school board meetings and complain. you got to be a voice. And you got to organize. Otherwise, you're going to get steamrolled. And it's going to take a toll on your kids. Really. 
another one was that was listed on this article is family members losing their jobs huge because kids feel the pressure from the parents if the parents aren't going to work if they lost their job if there's money issues it translates right to the kids they know and there's much more much much more this was an article that was in the guardian this next one and it was in September of 2021 and it says children face a mental health crisis but they need more than antidepressants just read you a short blurb on this almost three decades on according to the NHS figures children are being prescribed antidepressants in record numbers in 2020 there were 231,000 prescriptions for the drugs issued to children between ages 5 to 16 a study last October by NHS digital found that one in six children aged 5 to 16 in England is likely likely to have a mental disorder. An increase of almost half since 2017. The Children's Commissioner, Anne Longfield, has warned that services are unable to meet demand, with up to half of all children and teenagers referred to mental health, learning disability, and autism services in the run-up to the pandemic left without proper support. This summer, referrals hit a record high, Parents, mostly mothers, reported having to give up work to look after their mentally ill children. Another paragraph said, it's a catastrophe. The rise in prescriptions, campaigners worry. It's partly down to the GPs feeling powerless to help. So, pharmaceutical drugs being prescribed in record numbers seems to be the solution for everything prescription drugs I for one have always been somebody that never wanted to take any kind of prescription drugs now obviously when you're really sick I've had bronchitis a few times borderline pneumonia and I had to take medicine but I try to let my immunity system fight it off most of the time I'm a pretty healthy guy now, I've told you before that I've talked to psychiatrists, and the, op the ones that are open admit it's just a crapshoot. They really don't know what those interactions with the drugs do with your brain. They don't, they're not even sure how they work most of the time. And there aren't a lot of clear-cut answers. Again, it's one of those few organs in your body, the brain, that a physician never studies before they prescribe. Kind of weird. But if our society knows that mental health is a huge issue, and they know it's written about now, it's starting to get written about weekly, where's the help? Why isn't, why don't we have a department in the, within the Department of Health that has big studies going on on mental health on young people and older people? Why don't they have that? Do they know why it's happening? Hmm. If they don't know why it's happening, why aren't they proactively going about this or reactively going about this and studying it? Very concerning. Yahoo Life in the UK had another article. Children's mental health is in crisis. The pandemic and its effects have taken a heavy toll on the mental health of millions for children and adolescents. However, it's been particularly grim. Long periods away from school and friends with children forced to learn at home and relate to their peer groups only online have resulted in an explosion of demand for mental health support. A new investigation by the Telegraph newspaper has found that the number of children attending A&E with serious mental health issues, including self-harm and suicidal thinking, has leapt by more than 50% since the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Over 2,240 children in England alone were referred to mental health care professionals via A&E in May 2021, compared with 1,428 in May of 2020. Wow, it's a huge, huge step up. Meanwhile, NHS figures show that around 27,000 children a month, largely teenagers, are now prescribed antidepressants with over 1,000 under 11 years old. 
My gosh. What in the heck is happening here? In pre-pandemic life, most kids were kept in a protective bubble by parents who tried as much as possible not to burden their children with their own everyday financial and emotional pressures. 18 months plus of lockdown have not only torn these shields apart, it's much harder to hide the impact to your own problems when you're living on top of your children 24-7. Isn't that the truth? And you know, young kids don't need to know our problems. And we can't rely on them for emotional support. And that's the truth. And if you as a parent are relying on your kids for emotional support, get away from that quickly. They got their own issues. The World Health Organization had an article that they released in June 2021 with the title, One in 100 Deaths is by Suicide. WHO guidance to help the world reach the target of reducing suicide by one third by 2030. Suicide remains one of the leading causes of death worldwide, according to WHO's latest estimates published today in Suicide Worldwide in 2019. Every year, more people die as a result of suicide than HIV, malaria, or breast cancer, or war and homicide. In 2019, more than 700,000 people died by suicide. You wait. 2020, 2021, blow those numbers up, way up. So again, in 2019, more than 700,000 people died by suicide, one in every 100 deaths, prompting WHO to produce new guidance to help countries improve suicide prevention and care. We cannot and must not ignore suicide, said Dr. Tedros Adhanom, Director General of the WHO. Each one is a tragedy. Our attention to suicide prevention is even more important now. After many, many months living with the COVID-19 pandemic, with many of the risk factors for suicide. Among young people aged 15 to 29, suicide was the fourth leading cause of death after road injury, tuberculosis, and interpersonal violence. We're talking worldwide now, not just in the USA. More than twice as many males died of suicide as females. Suicide rates among men are generally higher in high-income countries. For females, the highest suicide rates are found in lower middle-income countries. I saw this one in a hundred stat. It bothered me a lot. And people get mad here in our village, some of them, because I talk about mental health. Well, do you know there's probably over 50 different countries watching right now. So, I'm in Glacier National Park, McDonald Lake behind me. I hope you come and visit sometime. I hope that you, as a sensitive, empathic human, can understand why I'm talking about this. This is something that we as people need to understand and respond to. We need to be more sensitive to our relatives and our friends. We need to be more aware of their day-to-day -day well-being, their attitude. Remember, somebody who is suicidal can put on the best act in the world. Here in this county, the president of a local high school, a boy, an athlete gave a talk to the student body that had suffered several suicides. And he said, you know, you can't do this. You need to take care of yourself. And he said he was fine. Short time later, he took his life. This isn't, this isn't something that we can just not think about. In the coming months and years, this will be a more in your face topic because it has to be. Because if we don't care, then it will continue to escalate until it harms somebody in your family. If it's one in a hundred worldwide, that was two years ago, I can only guess how horrific it is now since the pandemic. I would hope 
that there's legislators in our country that look at this and say enough is enough. No more masks. Kids get back to school. Teachers, take a stance. Get back in school. Teach our kids. And let them start leading a life like you and I left when, led when we were kids. I think we owe it to our children to let them have that freedom and let them have that learning experience and getting back to college, getting to high school, junior high and grammar school. If I seem a bit fired up today, I am. I read those articles earlier and then I drove over here to the park just thinking, how many hundreds of thousands of families have been directly affected by somebody taking their life? It's overwhelming. I get emails from you, the villagers, every week. I've had many that are so humbling that said, you know, Dave, you just talking about it helped me in my mental health. A couple people said that I helped them stray away from taking their own life. My gosh. Thank you. I, I, I can't believe I can do something like that or that I help, but if I did, I'm blessed. And if something can come from my son taking his life. Then I can help myself taking one step at a time, baby steps, moving forward in this world, trying to make it a better place for all of us. I sincerely appreciate you being here. Friday videos are always going to be a little different. This one was. And uh, I was supposed to get a couple big storms in the next few days, so I rushed out here to do this video before they hit. We actually haven't had a lot of snow and a lot of rain up here in northern Montana. It's not critical yet, but it's been very cold. And uh, it's coming. So be kind to your neighbor. Do something friendly for somebody. Next time you're at the store, look for something nice to do for somebody. And remember, we're friends. I know that, I know we as villagers care for each other. And I appreciate your stories. I'm a voice for you. I'm an advocate. And if somebody out there has some ideas about what we can do about this mental health issue, speak up. I have the ear of a couple congressmen, and uh, I have no problem approaching them with issues. So in the meantime, our documentaries are free. Don't buy my books on Amazon or eBay or anywhere online other than our site. You're just going to get ripped off by people charging extravagant amounts. And the website to buy the books is listed under the pin, the first comment under this video. So be safe, have a good week, end, and uh, I greatly appreciate you being here. I'll do a scan for you of the area so you can see it. So right now you're looking east. flat right now it's kind of cool those mountains back there are just really pretty right now you're looking north towards Canada and we're about 50 miles away and Glacier National Park goes all the way to the Canadian border 
right here water this lake is just crystal clear well there you go again thanks for being here and uh, if you like the video give us a thumb up thumbs up and comments are always appreciated be safe politis out